Hello and welcome to today's Market Matters video update for September 2023. I'm Harry Watt, joined by James Gerrish. Uh, we're going to talk about, obviously, August reporting season, which we've just come off the back of. We're going to talk about portfolio performance, where the markets are going. But I wanted to start, James, you've just been on the Apex Foundation posty ride, raised a lot of money for a good cause there. James, how was the ride and how much did you raise? <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Harry. I just wanted to kick off this video with saying a, a big thank you to all our subscribers, viewers, listeners, uh, clients, friends, family who were so generous in giving to a, a, a great cause. Uh, we raised over $40,000 for the Apex uh, Foundation, uh, going to help kids uh, with cancer and their families. So it was a, it was a fantastic ride. Uh, great bunch of uh, great bunch of guys to do it with. Uh, third one I've done. Uh, you came on the first one back in 2019, so you know what it's all about. Uh, challenging, uh, four days out in the Flinders Ranges, riding through some uh, pretty tough but picturesque terrain. So uh, once again, just a huge thank you for the support of our community. Uh, it means a lot to us and it means a lot to, to those who we're helping out. So uh, thanks again to all our viewers. It means a lot to have you back in one place, James. <laughs> uh, just uh, you know, starting off with that August reporting season back into markets, where uh, it was a bit of an interesting uh, sort of period. August market was down a little bit, but you know, sort of key takeaways from August, James. Yeah, reporting season's always great to get a handle on how companies are performing, and I think this was. I said it last month that this was going to be a really critical reporting period, the the most critical of um, uh, perhaps in the last uh, few years. And it certainly was. So broad brush, FY23, uh, results were better than feared. Uh, so beats outnumbered misses by a reasonable margin. Uh, there was more economic resilience across Australia, corporate Australia than perhaps many had feared, uh, particularly in some of the sectors that uh, the market was or investors were concerned about leading into it. So discretionary retail and the like did a lot better than perhaps the market was positioned for. Uh, the, the downside to that and why the market has fallen away during reporting season is FY24 outlooks were pretty dull overall. Uh, we spoke again last month about uh, there wasn't a, a lot of reason why company management would guide particularly well for FY24 given the challenges that are, are playing out uh, over the next 12 months. But still, you know, reasonable. We've seen aggregate downgrades to earnings expectations in FY24. Uh, about 5.7% um, earnings declines are now being priced into the market. If we rerun that just before reporting season, uh, we're only expecting uh, declines of less than 1%. So there has been earnings revisions on the downside, and that's why the market um, uh, has fallen away as a consequence of that, although it had been strong leading into reporting season. So reporting was choppy, um, lots of companies doing different things, etc. Not as bad as feared, but not perhaps those outlook statements that really buoyed investor confidence as we move into FY24, Harry. All right, we'll look at your performance now. So starting with our you know, flagship growth portfolio, James, backdrop for the market pulling back a little bit. How did that portfolio hold up? Yeah, the S&P ASX 200 accumulation index was down 0.74 at 1%. Uh, the flagship growth portfolio did worse than that, so it was down 1%. So underperformance of 26 basis points. Uh, we've spoken uh, for the last sort of six months that uh, each month the portfolio is outperformed. So a little bit of underperformance is, is, is slightly disappointing, to be honest with you, Harry. Uh, particularly in reporting season, we think we can add alpha during these these time periods. We didn't this time around. Uh, but if you look at calendar year to date, that portfolio is still up 16.36% or 16.31%, I should say, uh, which, is, uh, which is about 9.6% ahead of the market. So... Uh, longer term, uh, the portfolio remains um, you know, a strong performer, but a little bit of slight underperformance during uh, uh, the uh, FY23 reporting period in August. Yeah, then moving on to the uh, active income portfolio, James, um, how did that one stand up? Yeah, it was down 0.24% for the period. So against the market, again, down about 70 basis points, but it was underperformed its benchmark, which is the RBA cash plus four. It's an absolute return benchmark which was up about 60 basis points. So if I look calendar year to date, it's up 6.05%, uh, about 1% ahead of its benchmark. Uh, and on a three-year view, it's up something like 12.5% per annum over that time period, well ahead of its benchmark. So uh, slight weakness, but not too concerning at this stage, Harry. Yeah, definitely a bit of uh, asset allocation playing out there. Your mm -hmm. market was down uh, 0.74% and that, uh, um, that portfolio's got about 50% in equities as well. So 
a little bit of outperformance in that respect too, James. Exactly. The equities did better than the market uh, in that sleeve of the portfolio. It's got some property exposure. Uh, that did worse than the market. Real estate was another area of the market that struggled during reporting season from a, a sector perspective. Uh, and then the fixed income component pretty much held its own during the period. And moving internationally, the uh, market matters international portfolio, big asset allocation to uh, US equities in particular. James, how did that stack up uh, given the, the differences in international returns? Yeah, so it was down 1.18% for the period, uh, underperformed its benchmark. The MSCI world in Aussie dollar terms was up 1.56%. Uh, if I look at a calendar year to date, it's still up 21.77% ahead of its benchmark and still tracking along nicely. So uh, a slightly weak month, but the uh, again, the performance over uh, the wider time period still stack up well. All right, and then back to the domestic portfolios, the final one, the emerging companies portfolio, James. Obviously, small caps they have uh, big moves within reporting season. How did that portfolio go in August? <laughs> yeah, you weren't wrong there, Harry. There, there was a lot of um, significant moves in reporting periods, particularly in some of the smaller areas of the market. This portfolio, we spoke about it in our FY23 wrap-up and focus on FY24 uh, a couple of months ago, and we said this was going to be a focus area for us. Uh, uh, thankfully, it started the period uh, well. So in August, it did 6.52%. So again, 6.52%. That was 7.83% above its benchmark. Calendar year to date, it's up about 5%. Again, about 1.5% above its benchmark. And uh, that portfolio was getting on track. So happy with some of the uh, some of the larger positions in that portfolio, uh, Ordinate did particularly well, 88, uh, they were up over 50% in the in the month. Uh, Aussie Broadband, largest position in the portfolio, it did particularly well as well. So uh, a reasonable performance and you know, 7% in a month out performance, we'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, pretty good. A uh, few positions there in reporting season, it beats out wide the misses in that portfolio in particular. Uh, in terms of you know sector performance um, through through August, uh, there's been some big swings over the last six months mm. in terms of how sectors have gone. One that we've talked about a lot right, lately is the healthcare sector. It's been soft. Uh, we've got a couple of positions in the flagship growth, growth portfolio within that sector. How's that looking now? Is that a sector that we're starting to take a bit more of an interest in, given its underperformance? Yeah, we've got an interest in it already, as you made mention of. Um, one of the uh, interesting I guess, um, more sector tilts uh, going into reporting. We were a little bit more defensive in our positioning, and it was actually the defensive positions that struggled or the sectors that are generally more defensive struggled. So that be healthcare, consumer staples was another one uh, that was bid up ahead of results, but, but tapered off as a consequence of results. So defensive positioning, even though the market was down, didn't really work, uh, particularly in healthcare. Uh, I may mention the portfolio, the flagship growth portfolio down 1%. Um, the healthcare, those two stocks in that portfolio, ResMed and Ramsey Healthcare, took about one and a half percentage points off performance uh, of that portfolio. So you look on the, on the positive side, everything else did better than the market, but these two positions were major detractors from the portfolio. Ramsey Healthcare is more about um, growth being delayed or resumption of growth being delayed. More comfortable in that one. Uh, ResMed was a little bit more of a, a a challenging position, and we're a little bit more uncertain of that of what comes next for ResMed. Obviously, the uh, their results, uh, Q4 results, were slightly underwhelming. But the more important point for performance was uh, the rise of um, uh, weight loss treatments and their potential impact on the demand for sleep apnea treatments, uh, where ResMed is uh, well and truly ingrained in. Uh, it's unknown what these are going to be, and the the, the, the the variability there is around the funding. If the funding changes for, for these sorts of weight loss treatments, that could be a, a major impost on ResMed. Uh, as I said, it's hard to quantify at this stage. The market's acting with its feet. Uh, they don't like the uncertainty if they've sold the stock down. So uh, we're still there. Uh, we haven't uh, trimmed our position or exited our position, um, but it is one that, as I said before, we're a little bit more uncertain on. And we're trying to still ascertain the best approach to take here. But ultimately, I think it will trade with a lower multiple moving forward because of the uncertainty around it and the potential for um, you know slower growth moving forward. All right, on to the consumer sectors. The staple sector had a pretty difficult uh, month and di- difficult reporting season, but the discretionary retail is surprised on the upside. I think 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Did that come down to positioning heading into August or is that sort of a more um, exemplified of of the backdrop of the economic outlook at the moment? I think, yeah, two points you make there. So um, it was about positioning. So the market was very negative on discretionary retail moving into this reporting season. And probably rightly so that the the outlook for interest rates or I guess that the movement in interest, interest rates over the past 12 months has been pretty extreme. Uh, the extrapolation of that is that uh, people have left money in their pockets to go out there and spend on discretionary items. So there was a lot of fear and a lot of negativity already built into these sorts of um, these share prices or expectations around their earnings. Uh, they didn't fall off a cliff like they um, uh, like the market was probably positioned for. So they ran up on the back of that. Um, we were probably guilty of being a little bit negative on that space. Uh, not a huge number of positions exposed to that. The emerging companies portfolio has a a number of uh, discretionary retailers within it, but the other portfolios uh, don't really have a lot of exposure there. So um, look, I I sit here and think about market positioning moving forward. I still think that sector is one to be a little bit cautious of, particularly after the run-up it had during reporting season. But the economic outcomes, as you rightly point out, that we've been seeing and the performance at the stock level or the company level has been better than market feared. So um, to me, it it speaks to the better economic outcomes that we've been achieving. Uh, This recession, um, it's a hugely anticipated, forecasted recession. It doesn't seem like it's going to play out. So right now, this Goldilocks sort of scenario where central banks have got inflation under control and interest rates uh, could potentially have peaked, and that is our view, uh, then that is going to be supportive of the discretionary retailers moving forward. So uh, we've warmed to the sector, but it has run run hard. And there's you got to be picky. We spoke last a couple of months ago, I think, about Premier Investments in a webinar, um, highlighting that that had a really strong trading update during the period. They don't report till for another couple of weeks, um, but they did have a strong trading update, and that was indicative of some of the the sector players or key sector players there. In terms of portfolio positioning and, and investor positioning, Resources has had some pretty significant moves in terms of bulls and bears over the last few weeks. Mm-hmm particularly in the backdrop of that China outlook that's deteriorated a little bit. Um, our view on resources for the rest of the year, James, is that something that we're going to be looking to add more money to? Yeah, it is. So I was reading the Bank of America Merrill Lynch uh, investor survey this morning just around the positioning to, to China and emerging markets versus the positioning to the US. As we all know, the market has turned universally bearish on China and that's shown through investor positioning. Uh, that bearish outlook has flowed into uh, positioning around resources, so the resources have pulled back. Uh, we think that's an opportunity, but in, in select areas of the resource sector. So uh, we added to BHP this in, in recent times in our flagship growth portfolio and income portfolios. We've bought a position in Paladin, a uranium company that's coming into production early next year. Uh, we also bought Cameco, global uranium company, a large player in the space. So we think that Area. Some areas in the energy space really have legs. We've obviously spoken about our views on coal uh, in the, in recent months, uh, but but uranium and other areas in the energy space are really interesting to us as well. So uh, we're bulls on commodities. Uh, we think the US dollar is over time will go lower, and that will be supportive of commodities. We think global growth will end up being better than where the market is positioning for at the moment. Uh, and that's going to be supportive of resources as well. So we are bullish on the space and we're using this weakness to uh, ultimately add to positions rather than rather than uh, move away from them. All right, that's all we've got time for for the September 2023 video update. It's great to have James back in one piece. Um, we're going to get back to some more content for our subscribers. Mm-hmm.